We give him praise today. Amen. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we do praise you. We thank you for this opportunity of fellowship. Thank you for how you've allowed us to see this day. For you have blessed us indeed on today. Again, this is a day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Now, God, let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in your sight. For you are God, our strength and our Redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. God bless your hearts. You can be seated in the house of God. God love you today. Amen. amen. It's good to be here. Good to be here. Amen. amen. Trip to South Carolina was very, very good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the saints that uh, traveled with us. It was a good trip. God truly did bless on that uh, on the way up and the way back. Glory to God. So definitely was a good trip. Uh, God has just been impressing on my heart uh, something. There's a few things that have really been impressing. And I, I'm going to let you know, church, first of all, I just thank God for the church. I thank God for the church. I, I really do. The church has been indeed a blessing to me, to my family. I pray God to you, because uh, you are the church. And we want to talk a little bit about the church. I, I, uh, it's amazing how we can come together, glory to God, and God can bless like he's doing. But the thing of it is, the devil's not happy. He's, he's not, oh man, when he, it seems like when people are doing good, he gets real downright ornery. Uh, it's a proven fact that uh, we're going to go into the Word first. We're going to go into the Word. If you will, turn your Bibles to uh, the book of Matthew, 16th chapter. Matthew, I have a few notes here. and You know, that's not normal for me. I'm an extemporaneous brother. I just shoot, man. We're going to definitely stay in the Word for a minute. Uh, amen. I was at a wedding last night, uh, a friend of mine, a guy I worked with, we was at his wedding, and it was, a, it was really good, had a good time, but uh, just amazing how people need extra fluids to get them okay, um, <laughs> extra, extra fluids to keep them I'm going to ask you this question, and I, I used to be in the world, and I, you know, when you think about all the money you spend, and then the, the actual uh, benefit that you get after the end and the closure, you would have to ask yourself, is it worth it? You know, I, and I guess some people will say, yeah, I guess it is, but, you know, <laughs> and you can see people's character and their expressions and their motivations change. So that fluid does have an effect on you. Don't kid yourself. It, it changes your demeanor. It changes your attitude. It, and, and so don't think, don't think that it's not having an effect. How many would say, yeah, it's having an effect? And I'm not here to beat you up, church, because I know some of y'all, you know, have your coolers and what have you. And I'm not, I'm not here to beat that up. That is definitely not a heaven and hell issue. But sometimes when you finish up, you feel like you're in hell, but I'm not going to go there because, um, amen. And, and this is not a heaven and hell issue. Just, and why am we going there? Because some, sometimes you have to really ask yourself, you know, and do I really need this? Uh, Y'all listening? Anybody out there listening to me? You know, you have to ask yourself, do I really need this to get me through? And, and I'm going to oh my God, I think I'm on, a, I'm on something here. Um, do, would it be more advantageous for me to get the word and read it at that particular time or to do that? That, that was just something to think about. That's why, I, you know. How many would say yes? My subject today, my subject today, I, I have uh, various texts I'm going to be reading, but let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. In the, the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew, 
um, the 18th verse. But I'm going to go up to 17th verse and reading. And reading. This is the 16th chapter of Matthew. Uh, I want to, the 15th verse is really where I want to go and go down. 15th verse, I wrote 16 because that's where my lesson uh, had led me. In the 16th chapter, the 15th verse. And he said unto them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or hell shall not prevail against it. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. When Jesus was saying that, and, and there are denominations that have taken that, that, that they thought it was Peter God was building the church on. God cannot build the church on any man. We cannot hold the church. Uh, we cannot hold the church. Let me go here and read this first of all, and, and you can get a better idea of where I'm coming from. Many people today understand the church as a building. It is not, this is not biblical, this is not a biblical understanding of the church. The word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which is defined as an assembly or called out people. This building is not the church. The misconception is we feel like a building. What church do you go to? Uh, and we have come to a place that we believe that this brick building is the church. Not so. Not so. And because of that, the devil has used it against us. Yes, he has. Because when you refer to a church, you immediately refer to the building. How many would say, let the church say, amen. amen. Uh, I myself, what church do you belong to? New life. Uh, where is new life? And now we're going to talk a little bit about us. Go to the book of Corinthians, the 12th chapter. First Corinthians. Thank you, son. Yeah, man, there are two of them in there. I know that first brother was pretty good. Uh, first Corinthians, the 12th chapter. We're going to begin reading at the 12th verse. And reading. For the body is one and many... And for the body is one and has what? Many members. But all the members, but all the members of that one body, of that what? One body being many are what? One body. So also is what? Christ. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into what? One body. Whether you are Jew or a Greek whether slave or free, and have all been what? Made to drink. For in fact, the body is not one member, but what? Many. Many. If the foot would should say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body, this is this therefore not of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an ear, I am not of the body. Is, is it therefore not of the body? Now I want to talk to us. I don't really know what part we are, but I know we're a part. Amen. Now I'm going to validate this body, this part of the body. If God had not ordained us, we would not be here. Amen. The devil came last two years ago. Under, I came under attack. And the devil intentions was to destroy this part of the body. This member, whatever part. But God said, not so. 
So I would say to you that it behooves you, if you are a part of the body, be a part of the body. Let the church say. Amen. It's time that we step up. Amen. What do you mean by that? The, I'm going to share this with you, church. We don't really understand how serious Jesus takes the body. I'm saying that because, now I'm saying, I'm talking to us now. I'm not talking to any other part of the body. I'm not at another denominational grouping. I'm talking to us. Whatever you do, and being part of this body, it affects every one of us. Look at somebody say, it affects us all. Let the church say, amen. 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 You cannot do dumb stuff and think that it doesn't affect us. Now, that's why I got to talk to you. 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 When, when one part of the body go out and get beat up, the other, because, see, my, my pinky, see, we might be the pinky. Yes, yes. If I bruise my nail, the whole finger hurt. Yes, yes, yes. But we're under the impression that we're just in this by ourselves. Yes. And then the devil would make us think, huh? That's why, I'm going to tell you what, that's why sometimes you need to keep your mouth shut. That's right. Yes. We talk too much dumb stuff. We're, we're talking stuff that you really don't know. And when you don't know, you don't know. Just admit, I don't know. Let the church say, amen. This part of the body God has put us over. We have to work and heal one another. Let me tell you something. If, if, if I got a, 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 a cut on this finger, I'm going to deal with it. Now, I need to talk with you now. I need to talk with you. Can I get in your house? So, so don't get offended if this thing is cut and I start treating it. Oh, my God, I feel like preaching. And I start treating it. See, we are under the impression we're in this by ourselves. But this finger is not in it. By Now, here's what's awesome. You, 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 you have to thank God. I, I wish I could teach this lesson in the fullest. I can't do it under the 20 some minutes I have left. God broke the, 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 the beginning of this dispensation. Glory to God, because there are seven dispensations. Oh, we, we couldn't been in the dispensation of innocence because Adam and Eve couldn't deal with it. They couldn't deal with it. We, if you go to the dispensation of the millennial period, you're going to find out that people can't deal with it. See, that's why you have to give your will over to God because you don't know how to deal with your will. That's why he said, and let thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. But I'm coming back to this part. Back in my day, uh, when I first got saved, we have a tendency that we would call sin out. We just call it out. My God, we, and, and, and sometimes we called sin out the wrong way. If I saw you at, now I, I want to talk to y'all. Can I step down? I, I don't even feel like stepping, but because I got this, this leg here. If I see you, if I see you in the bar, I got a right to come talk to you. Don't get offended. Because you got to understand when you're doing something, it affects me. Oh, y'all don't want to talk with me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Well, it ain't none of your business. It's all my business. That's right. You can't be doing stuff. Now, you might say, well, what's wrong with going to the bar? Well, here's the thing. Not a whole lot. You might be going there to get potato chips. But I got a right to walk behind you. Come on, come on. Go ahead. I got a right to walk in that bar, Elder, and watch you buy your chips. Now I know 
you would say, preacher, you're meddling. No, I'm not. Because I got to take care of the body. There's stuff going on now. I was listening. I was on, uh, uh, and I said I would not mess with news, but news and with the president. I'm trying to keep myself on point, but they were talking about pills. And, and my God, they were talking. And this young lady, 29 years old, 29 years old from West Virginia, said, I'm on 29, 29 pills. No, 13 pills, 29, 13 pills. And she said, I'm hooked up on pain medication. And I'm like, I want to tell you all something. Glory to God. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with pills and medication. <laughs> I, take, I take a few myself. <laughs> but the ones I take is for high blood and <laughs> low blood, <laughs> the balanced blood. <laughs> but I think that... Some of the pills that we're dealing with, yeah. I, I think there's a hookup. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's you. I don't know. But as the body, I have a right. Yeah. Somebody say, amen. amen. I have a right. I have a right now to check in the areas. Y'all, I know some of y'all. Now, I want to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this because you need to hear it. This message is tough. I know it's tough. We got a right to look in your closet. Because you got a right to look in mine. Now, I'm going to tell you why. See, before, I just mealy mouth. Hey, you don't look in my closet. No, I'm going to tell you why I got a right to look in your closet. Because I can help you clean yours, and you can help me clean mine. Y'all, somebody ain't hear that. I, I don't believe somebody heard that. Look, my wife has helped me on numerous occasions, telling me you don't need that. But I felt like I need. How many ever felt like they needed something, but somebody helped them and showed them you didn't need it, and you found, oh, God, help me. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got a right. I, I wouldn't dare, not today, because you don't have to. But back in the day, young ladies, if you got pregnant out of wedlock, would march you in front of the church. You would stand up there and apologize. I apologize for getting pregnant outside the church, okay? But we never dealt with the guy. And because we never dealt with the guy, now these jokers are running around like banshees. I understand where they got the word dog from. What's up, dog? Because a dog, oh, y'all didn't hear me. But I got a right to deal in this box. Y'all better listen to this. I got a right. So who gave you the right? This did. See, because I'm not going to let this part of the body suffer unnecessarily. If I'm wrong from the pulpit to the door, you got a right to come to me. Pastor, I saw you cursing. And if I curse you, then you bring a couple of other brothers and let me curse them. And if I curse enough of y'all, y'all put me out. See, Here's what we got to start understanding. You got to understand, glory to God, that there's a privilege to be a part of the body. Amen. This is not a joke, folk. Do, do you understand? God, I wish you could understand. God did not have to save you. He did not have to put you in a place where somebody cared. There's places, glory to God, that you can go in and they don't care about you. I pray for you every day. If I want to, if I don't, I'm praying. I start out with my kids. I'm working all the way down to the house of faith. Then some of you have the audacity not to show up on Sundays. When I was a Catholic, I'm going to talk to you. Can I talk in this house? When I was a Catholic, I knew just a little part of Nostra Quotidianum de Nobis Hoodie. That's a little Latin. I dare not miss Mass on Sunday. I could curse. I could steal venial sins, some of them. But not showing up for church was a mortal sin. He told me, he said, you're going to hell for not coming to church. Now, I'm going to tell you 
why you should come to church. It ain't got nothing to do with heaven and hell, per se. Iron sharpens iron. Here's what folk are going to say. Man, some of the meanest folk in the church. Some of their, that's, that's, true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Ain't none of us perfect. Yes, sir. But we're helping one another. Amen. I guarantee you, those that don't come to church hang out with a lot of worldly folk. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking to this house. Yeah. And you got a worldly attitude. Yeah. Come on. You got a worldly demeanor. Yeah. And you come in periodically yeah. trying to get a little holy on the, the hell. So holy and hell don't mix. Don't mix. Don't mix. Come on, man. Come on. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of the time that you miss was the time God had something to speak to. I wish somebody heard this message. Now I'm going to talk. So, see, here's the thing. Back, I don't know where we messed it up, pastors, Pastor Toe, elders. We felt, well, use me, I felt, oh my God, I got, I don't want to offend you because you right. won't come back. Right. If you ain't in, it don't matter. That's right. That's right. That's right. Young ladies, it's like this. You dating a skunk. I mean a guy. God, Jesus. <laughs> if he ain't no good, it don't matter. If he leaves you, he did you a favor. I, I wish somebody, look, I know. Some folk could just get upset with me. Say, he ain't, he don't. Look, let me tell you something. I've done enough study now to know that if you don't press folk, they ain't going. They ain't going to do. There's denominations that will tell you, you're going to go door to door, and if you don't, we're putting you out. They got more people marching than the law allows. Well, the law does allow, but <laughs> here's what we do. Here's what we do. We let you come and go when you please. You can get up and walk around when you feel like it. You go back there. I'm talking to this house. You can go back there and hang out. Sit around, go outside. Message being preached, you outside. Get mad if we put a little pressure, just a little pressure, just a little, just a little. Oh, you got your, you got some nerve. I ain't never coming back. Now we got to, oh my God, I'm sorry. We didn't, we didn't mean to. I want to share this with you. What would I be like letting you go to hell and not telling you? What good, what, what kind of a pastor would I be? What kind of ministers would we be if we let one another just run rapid and do whatever we want? Let me tell you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a disciplinarian by nature. Came from under great disciplinarians. Sonny, bunny, honey. <laughs> Sonny, bunny, and honey. You could not just do anything. No, sir. No, sir. You, you had a certain way to talk. My mama never heard me curse at her. I want to tell you something. You're a born again believer. You ain't got no business cursing. No, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Now, you're going to say, Pastor Simmons, it's not a heaven and hell thing, but your testimony is messed up. That's right. I gotta watch what I do. I beat myself on. I, let me tell you something. I told Deke, I said, why would Jesus say, take up your cross daily? Take up your cross daily. Because this skin, this bone, this sinew is no joke. You gotta bring it under every day. It's a skunk. You gotta work it. You gotta, if you don't wash it, it stinks. The older you get, it starts melting. So, I would rather this hurt than the inward man. See, I want to tell you something. I was talking to 
This young lady last night, nurse, my wife, she works in the prison system. And she says it's amazing how the population is growing. The prison population is growing. You would think as smart as we have become, we've become stupid. We're letting the system take us on. I want to share, oh my God, help me here. A lot of that rap music is straight from hell. It's feeding your mind hellacious stuff. I'm going to pimp the president's wife. He wrote that off. That's it. I don't care. I, I, I'm not, I know you ain't going to get that CD, are you? For, no. no, it was a rapper who wrote it, I think he, but they, they leaped him and he erased it. One talking about the president's a clown and he's going to kill him. You can go to jail for stuff like that. I'm not favorable to the president, but I respect the office. I respect the office. But more so, church, let me share something with you. Y'all are dear to me. Y'all are precious folk. And for me to beat you up unnecessarily over dumb stuff, or you see me taking in a fault, deal with me. I don't care, from the pulpit to the door. And because we're a lot of family, we are family. We're all family. I've got folks talking about, well, I'm not a Simmons. And when I get to heaven, he's not going to say, all the Simmons just come over here. You're you're not a Simmons. You can't. You're Simmons. He talks about the church. It's us. When we leave out of here, it's just a building. Preachers are trying to build great cathedrals. I was hooked up with, I remember when I was going to add. I remember that. I I don't know what God's going to do, but I was going to add. I was going to put a big, 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 big add on. And and what happened, my mind started shifting to money. I got to get, I got to fleece, not fleece. I got to (laughs) ask. Yeah, call it what it is, fleece. But I needed more money because I was going to put this. Now I want to share something with you. Look how many empty seats I got in here. Whole row, bam. Two people on that row. Two people on that row. Let me just keep going on down. And uh, I, I, you know, I said I'm going to build another edifice. About 300 seats. I can't even fill this. If y'all had to let me build that, y'all should have put me out. But Pastor, you ain't can't even now. I want to share this with you. God gave me this, this revelation. This is an awesome revelation. God says, God spoke, and, and y'all, some of y'all was with me. Have you ever seen a sheep walk around with a staff walking around in the field? A sheep walking out there guiding other sheep with a staff. He's out there, get them time, baby, 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 baby. <laughs> getting them together. No, it, 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 you haven't. It's a shepherd that leads the sheep. He guides the sheep. He don't hurt them. You notice a, a, a shepherd does not drive sheep. He, he, they, they walk behind him. Yeah. And, and, but here's the thing. Sheep begot sheep. So obviously y'all are not pregnant with sheep. That's right. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You, you just, just ain't. You just, just ain't. Now I'm not going to say, I don't know. I, because I've been in this since 19... I started pre- I preached my first message in 1974. Been in it for a while. See, been in it for a while. So either I'm not doing a good job, that could be obvious. Or you ain't doing a good job. Now I can point the fingers and you can point the fingers. Doesn't matter who pointing the fingers, we ain't doing a good job. That's right. Come on, We ain't doing a good job. And and now I'm going to share this with you also. Obviously, too, people getting saved or coming to church isn't important to us. Now, when I say coming to church, being a part of, so obviously we might need to regroup our game plan because folk are going to go to hell because we ain't doing our job. Now, here's my question. How am I going to explain that? 
I've got to explain, because I've got to explain it. i got to preach. i got to go to, Jesus is going to ask me, what you do? God's going to say, what do you do with my son? Well, I went to church. He said, did you go to church? Did you, you went to church. See, here's our misconception. This is not the church. We are. So did you really go to church? Did you really go to church? Or did you go through a formality? You get up, put on your little formality. Thank you, baby. Formality. Thank you. Thank you. You put your stuff on and you come out here. <laughs> Y'all get up and stay. Lift your hands. Say hallelujah. Do you think, y'all can put me out after this, it don't matter to me. Do you think God is setting up there saying, you know what, they're right on point. He called the church to the carpet. He beat a lot of them up in the book of Revelation, but one, the, the church of Ephesus, and here's what he told that church. He said, you're doing okay in area. He said, but I have one thing against you. And he said, and, and the question was, what's that? He said, you left your first love. You ain't serious. You ain't serious. I'm at a place in life, <clears throat> some people say one foot in the grave, and one foot, <laughs> I got one foot in heaven, and the other foot just going to catch it. So it don't matter now that if somebody get offended and say, hey, I'm hitting the door because it ain't me that you're offending. Amen. See, I gotta come, I've come to a level of maturity that you're not offending me. It's God that we're dealing with. And here's the problem. He's going to hold me accountable. He's, yeah, he's going to say, what you do with my folk? I said, Lord, I, was I doing the best? He said, you ain't, you, you wasn't straight up with them. You let them just do. They can't do whatever they, how come you didn't know that? Because Lord, I ain't want to hurt them. He said, did you know you didn't hurt them, you killed them? You didn't hurt them. You killed them. He said, better shoot them right in the head, right between the eyes. So now, what do we do about it? See, that's the thing. What are we going to do about it? First thing I had to do was, first of all, be honest with myself. How many say, be honest with you? Yeah. Don't, don't look at, you know, even I sit in the closet. That's why, that's why if I knew you're going to look at my closet, I'm going to clean my closet. Yeah. I really didn't. If I knew, Elder, if I told you I'm coming to look at your closet, and I had a right, you're going to start taking stuff out. Yvonne, get over here and bring me a big trash bag. <laughs> and she's going to say, Fred, bring me one too. <laughs> it's time to do cleanup. Amen. Time out for excuses. Everybody got an excuse. Everybody got an excuse. Jesus could have said, they're tired jokers. And I ain't dying for none of them. They ain't, worth, they ain't worth a drop of my blood. And be honest, he was, that'd be, we ain't worth a drop of his blood, really. But then he looked beyond our faults, saw our needs. That's why it's time that this place gets serious about helping one another. Stop beating us up. Talking about us with heathens. They ain't a bit saved, and, and I'm, I'm not beating folk up. I'm just telling you how it is. I'm, uh, uh, can I shoot from the hip? If we were all that, how come only eight folk got on the ark? If we were all that, how come only eight got on the ark? Eight. Out of all them folk, eight. I'm doing a little study, and in the millennium, millennium period, we're going to be there. 
They're going to be there. Glory to God. But some folk, I pray God I'm not one of them, are going to still rebel when Satan's loose. Because we give Satan too much territory. And the reason why we give Satan too much territory is because we're not checking up on one another. If you help me, I, I guarantee you. Maybe if you came to me and said, Pastor, I saw you doing, why are you doing that? Now I've got to explain it to you. One or two things are going to happen. I'm going to get walk in pride. I'm going to be humble. I'm going to either uh, uh, humble myself or I'm going to walk in pride. Pride to say, ain't none of your business. You better mind your own business. You ain't, you, you, who? I'm just as saved as you are. Or I'm going to say, baby, forgive me. I was wrong. I was wrong. Oh, my God, I was wrong. And, and I'm going to say, let's pray for me. Matter of fact, now I'm going to start praying for you. We're going to pray together. They pray for me. Time that we start praying together. Husbands need to start praying in their homes. Matter of fact, all of us need to get up in prayer. Everybody needs to start praying. Now I'm going to show you a miserable sight. Musician, God laid it on our heart to have an 8 o'clock prayer. How many of y'all go, how many of y'all work at 8 o'clock? How many getting ready for work by 8 o'clock? Just raise your hand. Don't sit up there like you're, like, I'm, like Jesus. Just looking at me like, ain't none of your business. Everybody that are up by 8 o'clock, raise your hand. Either school or something or another. Open the closet door. And got the audacity got the audacity to take the creator of all. He got you up. Gave you every penny you got. Matter of fact, he gave you pennies that you didn't, shouldn't even got. Allowed you, allowed you to breathe every day. Watch over your babies. Even when they shouldn't have been watched over. Because you wasn't watching over them. Oh, Jesus! And we got the audacity out of four Sundays in a month not make one of them. And the right preacher, we laid up. Think we doing God a favor getting here 10 to the area. Here we come. I dare you do it on your job. They'll fire you at the door. We in here walking around, Lord, bless them, help them. I see how Moses felt. Some of y'all ain't got two nickels to rub together. Should be laying on this altar saying, Lord, help me out to fix my money. My money messed up. I'm messed up. Help me. If my people. First of all, you got to figure if you're one of his people. That are called by my name. Will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways. I'll heal your land. I'll heal your land. Don't ask me to heal it. God will heal it. We need it healing. I'm here to let you know. Got the nerve thinking you're doing God a favor. Not near one of us did God a favor being here today. God didn't need you to show. He don't need you. We need him. What's happening? Devil got a lala. I, I was so tired this morning. Slept well, but just tired. I'm praying to the Lord. He said, it's a tired spirit. Even in that tired spirit, I got up. Seemed like old folk. Y'all young folk, it's a, it's a crying shame. Got us up there in McDonald's. Because y'all won't do the job. Now I understand. Every one of you young folks should be here on this altar. Every, every chance you get a shot. 
because you got hell coming down the road. I don't care what you think. President Trump is in there for a reason. Oh, he's going to make you pray. Oh, oh, you ain't prayed yet. He going to take your stamps. He going to take your medicine. Ain't no pill selling. He going to take it. He going to take your daycare. Oh, Jesus. Where, where my wife at? She only going to watch so many of them. You going to be wondering? You going to be what? Oh, God help me here today. You going to be wondering, how am I going to make it? Only God, I'm telling you, he knows how to break us down like a double barrel shotgun and pop both your shells out. We should be dragging folk. You got folk that have been gnawing on you. You need to bring, you can't fix it. Bring them to God. Bring them to the body. Lord, help us. God bless when that brother joined the church. It just, just helped me with everything I got in me. Y'all got folk that you know need to be blessed. Some of them you know, and, and they're dragging you. They're dragging you. You know the deal. I, look, I've been, I once was young, but now I'm old. And when I was young, those folk, I want to tell you something. The world, when you're in it, has a tendency to overrun you. And you ain't beating it. You don't kid yourself. You're not going to beat the world. They, you, you be hanging out, and they're going to be toting on something, and you'll be toting it with them. They be drinking, and you'll be slobbering on the same bottle. I know the deal. Don't kid yourself. Oh, I'm going to do. No, you ain't. You're lying to yourself. I was in the Philippines. A preacher preached a message that stayed with me to the day. Come clean or stay away dirty. Come clean or stay away dirty. This is heaven and hell work now. Ain't about your money. Ain't about how much you can accumulate. Because you can die in the middle of a job. You can, you can be, look, a friend of mine bought his, his wife a brand new uh, Cadillac. No, it wasn't a cat. It was a Lincoln. Brand new Lincoln. Brand new. She was out there putting the tags on it and dropped dead of a heart attack. 40, 48 years old. When he came home for lunch, guess who was laying out there with a screwdriver close to her? Don't kid yourself, man. My deal is when you die, which you are, just a matter of time. It's my job to tell you. Don't let hell beat you up. Because the devil as a roaring lion is ripping us apart. He, he's on us, man. Because he don't like you. He don't like, and the reason why he don't like you, he, don't, he hates Jesus. And he know if I can beat you up. Look, you want to hurt me, beat my kids up. Beat one of my kids. I, I got a problem. I might not feel the lump, but I feel like I'm lumped. And I'm going to lump. That's why it's time, church. We got to crank up the heat. We got, how many would say, let the church say, it's time to crank up the heat. We're giving the world everything we got. It's time to give God. Am I, I, ain't, I ain't asking for your money. God knows. If I wanted your money, glory to God, I'd, I'd steal it. I ain't stealing nobody's money. God, help me here today. I'm talking, I'm interested now in souls Amen. and how you thinking Amen. and where you moving to. Some of, the friends you, some of the friends you got, you got to cut them loose, man. That's right. That's right. Some of the hanging folk, you got to cut them loose. Places you used to go, cut them loose. Yes. Stuff you used to do, cut it loose. Yes, sir. How many know that be the truth? Amen. Let the church say, yes. I'm done. I don't know if I'll be pastor next week. Y'all might, I might have to. Everybody in the house. Everybody in the house. Everybody in the house, from the pulpit to the door. Lord, I'm, I, I apologize. I'm wrong. 
I need help. He said, if you confess your faults, he's, your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all what? How many feel like touching and agreeing with this preacher? I feel like touching and agreeing. Come up here and touch and agree with me. I'm tired. I am not, I'm not playing with God. How many can say, I'm not playing with God? I need to go to the next level. I believe, I believe that this is going to cause me 